Hi, this is Shadi, and today it's going to be Scottish backhold wrestling versus judo. Much like all the folk style wrestling videos I've done, we're going to be discussing the gripping, the throws, the common throws, and how they are approached differently due to the rules, and of course the difference in rules. But before I do that, um, all the videos of the Scottish backhold wrestling will be linked in the description below. And of course, a big thank you to A Hero with a Thousand Holds for creating their content please check out their channel so the art that i practice is judo and i'm gonna go through a little bit of intricate group fighting discussion with the backhold uh, wrestling of scotland so first let's discuss the rules the name backhold wrestling which is very clear why that is you have your um, overhook in a, in a way and your underhook in a way and you're gripping your hands on the back of your opponent that grip should not be disconnected uh, it should always be maintained and it can slide up and down depending on your needs during the fight so it can become a pinch headlock it can become like a very tight over and under down in the middle of the back and so on so the way you win is you throw them down flat on their back anything besides their feet that touches the ground they lose or if they break their grip and thus you win the fight. So it's a very sensitive game, much like um, Inner Mongolian Boch and Sumo. Um, it's safe to say that there's no groundwork with this art and there's no leg grabs with this art. So before I discuss the gripping and the common throws, I just want to really clear something out. Sleeve and lapel throwing, particularly creating Pazushi and uh, unbalancing, is the hardest option you can have. When you limit that to the athletes, you will create a much more uh, technical athlete uh, when, you when you're throwing with only sleeve and lapel. So in judo, the clinch has very uh, particular rules in order for it to be considered valid and not just grip and maintain the hug or the clinch all the way. So here Koji Komuro is explaining that for beginners, when you're learning Uchimata slash Hanegoshi, Learn it from this uh, particular grip, like the hand around the back and with the sleeve or holding the forearm because it will eliminate a lot of the hassle from the highly technical sleeve and lapel unbalancing. So this idea that uh, without the jacket, judo is useless is absolutely not true. In fact, it's easier. So let's start with the first technique, which is the back heel. Notice there's the only thing that he needs to do in terms of the upper body is simply just getting closer while here, Check out what's happening with the sleeve as it is pushed down behind the back, uh, putting the weight completely on the uh, foot. And the lapel hand is actually pulling upwards, almost like a punch to the face. And from there, all the weight is being put on that leg that's being targeted. So um, the upper body, the sleeve and the lapel are doing a lot of the work in terms of weight distribution and unbalancing. The second one is your inner hook or your inner reap uh, commonly known as o uchigari here you can see the same thing uh, all you need to do is get close and from there overwhelm the upper body with your own and sweep from the inside or reap from the inside o uchigari in judo can be done in all sorts of ways your classical sleeve and lapel is you pull towards you and then push and just anchor the weight down with the sleeve and the lapel, much like that Kosoto Gake that we saw. And from there, you reap from the inside and you take them towards their weak side uh, as you do it. So obviously, this is not the only way to do it. You can do it hopping, you can do it at an angle, you can do it uh, from the clinch as Hifumi Abe does it. Or here, for example, your grip and go creating an angle like Daria Bilodid, one of the best at performing this technique in today's judo is world champion Daria uh, Bilodid. And here you can see she's, does, she's doing it from like a back grip, uh, sleeve lapel or sorts. Now, the outside stroke is your Sasai Tsurikomi Ashi. Again, the same thing it needs to be discussed is the uh, massive role of the sleeve pull or the lapel pull depending on which side you are doing it and from there you block you remove yourself you create space for them to go and you block the leg like around the tibialis or the ankle of the opponent and you 
and depending on your push it's how effective or your pull i'm sorry it's how effective it is let's check out here for example this is a society from a mongolian book and notice the differences from judo and backhold wrestling and here book he just puts his leg and yanks down almost barely moving to the side to create the space but it's all in the yank and that kick that sudden block of the leg so uh, you can be approached very differently in all sorts of culture now here the leg up buttock it's very similar to what koji komuro did um, with his hanegoshi just place the hips lift them upwards but in judo you can also do it double sleeve as from a sode to the komigoshi like utaabe and here your classical sleeve and lapel same judoka and of course from a headlock but here it ended up being a Uchimata Makikomi. I, I'm pretty sure the headlock grip just slipped and it ended up being uh, Uchimata Makikomi. Now, Uchimata Makikomi is a very uh, dangerous technique. Um, be careful how you land it. Post your forearm first on the ground and then from there proceed to sacrifice yourself. Don't do it like this. You will greatly uh, injure Uke or the probability of injuring Uke is very high at this point. And finally is your inside hype. Um, they're very known for this throw. And it is your classical uh, front uchimata, yaguranage, um, also called cabarelli in Georgia. All sorts of cultures around the world. They perform this throw, this video, courtesy of fighting films, uh, demonstrating how Churkishvili does his front uh, uchimata from around the waist you can do it with double belt grip like the mongolians or you can do it like with the back hold like the scottish so again it all ties, goes back to judo's versatility and the gripping and how uh, it creates such a versatile uh, art uh, in the process and how gripping is very fundamental in judo and it's such a big role before the throw so again just like I talked about in my Irish collar and elbow, it doesn't mean that there's no grip fighting in Scottish backhold. I'm sure you're looking to put your grip as the dominant one, kind of like when he goes for a pinch headlock with his backhold or he slides it down to get the hips close to him so he can rotate and create a hip toss, a hanegoshi, a haregoshi, or whatever it may be. All the videos will be linked in the description uh, below. Um, there's far more techniques obviously but i put the ones that are most important at least to me um so if you have anything else to add please let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon i post exclusive content for the patrons only my main content will always be on this channel so please don't feel obliged but your support would mean greatly to me this was shady and thank you for listening